Welcome back to another episode. It is myself and just myself sitting here today with y'all as we are doing another video game review. Um, the previous video game review we went over was about Power World and all the amazing things that came from it and just kind of a little touch up. If you haven't already listened to that episode, go listen to it. Um, and there's been a lot of updates since that episode actually was recorded, let alone released. And, you know, they're hitting record numbers everywhere from number of downloads, number of players to highest concurrent players. Um, they've now partnered up with Microsoft to ensure longevity. And yeah, that game is going to be around for a bit. And that game is doing fucking amazing. So it's um, great to hear. It's great to see. And what so many people thought would be a flash in the pan of a quote unquote rip off a Pokemon game. It's here to stay. It's amazing. But enough about the previous review. Let's go on with the most current game that we've actually talked about um, a, a while ago. Uh, we talked about at least like it having a lot of potential, the upsides to it, and that is the video game Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, uh, which is a DC comic game. So you get to play as, you know, the just or not the Justice Squad, sorry. You're trying to kill the Justice League. Uh, but you get to play as, you know, the traditional Suicide Squad. So you get to play as, like, Harley Quinn, King Shark. Um, why can't I think the other two names? I know their names, too. I'm probably the biggest fucking blank on my, in my life right now at this point. All right. So the players, you get to play as Harley Quinn, of course, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and King Shark. I often forget Captain Boomerang. Yeah, I'm not a big DC guy. I prefer Marvel, um, but the villains in DC do tend to be on a whole nother level, and I do prefer them for the most part. Uh, Deadshot, eh. I prefer Deadpool, as you all know. But anyways, this is a game. You play as the, the four members, and again, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and, Ju and King Shark, and you're trying to kill the suit, uh, Justice League, who is poisoned for lack of a better word. Um, and just before we go any further, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are like, don't spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil the, the game. I'm not going to give anything away, the ending, or anything like that, so you can still enjoy it. I'm simply just doing an opinionated review, which simply means this is what I think of it. But, but without further ado, let's hop into this. And again, not going to spoil anything. This is everything that you can literally... Um, find out by doing a quick Google search uh, or just playing the game, but nothing that is going to be ruining the gameplay for the most part. But the biggest question of all when we do these type of game reviews is, is the game worth the, the value? Is it worth the money that is placed around? Is it worth that price tag? Or is it just another glorified game? That's really what we're here to solve. We're here to figure out is, is this a game you should spend top dollar on? Because it is currently marked at its standard video game price tag of $70. Um, again, US, it's different if you know Canada, Europe, Australia, whatever. So keep that in mind. $70 in America. Is it worth this price point? And does everything that you get to be able to do and the story, the progression, all that, is that worth that hefty price tag? That's the whole point of this. And again, coming from an opinion and view standpoint where I myself, I enjoy this type of game. I enjoy this type of gameplay where you can play as multiple characters and you can kind of switch in between the ones that you want to play as and you can, you know, have a plethora, so to speak, ways to attack and you get more tactical stance on it as well of you know do you want to be the heavy hitter do you want to be quick and agile do you want range do you want mid-range like there's a lot of stuff to go with it and this game does have that going for it, so i will give them that you do get a good mix of character play that you can do um, but that's kind of not it but there's not a lot going for this game i gotta play and the, the beta slash alpha test, whatever you want to call it, back in like November, December time frame of 2023. And it was, it was, it was okay. It was good. Um, it wasn't great in my opinion. 
it still had a lot left to give as waiting for the release date which just so happened to actually be fe uh, february 2nd that it was fully released so now it's out for everyone and we can do the review properly since everybody now has access to it so, uh, if you enjoy a single player game which uh, if you've been around here and two guys one gamepad you know well, that's my go-to i personally love single player games as i don't need internet i don't need to rely on anybody else i don't need anyone but me myself and i to progress through the entire story throughout the entire game i don't need anybody else to like go do dungeons or raids or anything like that i can literally play the game as it's designed at full potential by myself and i love that and that is the biggest reason why this game caught my attention um i think it was a year year and a half ago two years ago sorry and I'm telling you it's it did not live up to the hype so we're gonna start off with a little bit of bad news and try to end on the good news but there's a lot of mixed reviews on this and i completely understand it after playing after doing the testing after uh doing early access and finally having it available to everybody and playing through the story and beating it there's a lot left to desire from this game it really is uh it's one of those games of you know it, it should have been amazing the studio behind this is Rocksteady, and if you're inside the video game world and you know who they are, they are amazing. If you don't, but you like you know that name, you've heard it from somewhere. This is the studio that gave us the best, by far, one of the best games out there to date. The game series, which is the Batman Arkham series, which is Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. Those three, that trilogy is so freaking amazing the replayability the playability the storyline the graphics the play style the control style all of it a batman arkham trilogy was damn near perfect um there's still you know some things that should have been fixed never were neither here nor there it's a damn near perfect game in my opinion i loved it again another solo player how you play just as batman for the most part suicide squad had all that potential and was kind of promising the sun and the moon with this one because they are from Rocksteady. They are from this epic DC storyline of Batman Arkham. And yet this game in comparison to an older game, by the way, an older game, this is like Batman Arkham trilogy has been out for a long, long time. And this game literally just released and it, was announced back in 2020 so hell the four years my bad to get clarification four years it was announced um it's been postponed i think last year is when it started if not a year and a half ago is when we started seeing the postponement of this uh but it's had all the potential in the world and it fell flat on its face and it's sad because this is one of those games like you i don't i don't normally buy games at full that full price nor do i by most games honestly i go through like game pass and i you know pay 14 10 to 14 dollars a month i get access or i do ea's pass or ubisoft pass whatever I do a trial and i can play the game that way which is amazing for pc players by the way because you can't really do that so much on console so score one for pc players <laughs> no it's a joke it's a joke chill out but anyways so this game had all the potential it was set up to look amazing and in fact, for the first time, we get to play as the bad guys going after one of the most iconic teams out there, the Justice League. And, you know, going up against Flash and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern and Superman. You would think, oh, this is amazing. That's what got everybody's attention. You would think, oh, man, this is a fucking perfect game. Awesome. And the fact that they're behind Batman Arkham ser series. Perfect. This is going to be an amazing game. Oh, the the replayability no no does it have replayability yes to yes just because technically speaking um there's always more you can do in it uh, there's a good a decent storyline there's a decent storyline there on early access even on launch i'm still seeing some minor to medium-sized bugs that should be resolved upon launch and this is kind of just me venting really quick of I'm personally tired. I know there's a lot of people, probably mass majority of gamers are 
in similar positions of just being so sick and tired and fed up and annoyed with these studios producing these um, these games and you know presenting the world and giving us a sliver of a country so to speak and at the same time not only on top of that but they're jacking the price up to 70 dollars and then they're telling oh this is all the possibilities you can do with this game just for it to be launched and on day one glitchy buggy laggy it is just not a great experience and it really causes a lot of people to kind of sit back nowadays and go hmm do i really want to do i really want to pay that 70 dollar hefty price tag or should i just should i just wait and a lot of people are waiting nowadays i you can see the trend starting to hit harder and harder where people from especially with these big studios um where they're just kind of waiting now they're like well i'm not gonna get on day one release or week one release or even hell some are waiting beyond month one or month two of release because of the fact that it's such a letdown or there are so many glitches and bugs that it's not worth paying the price tag when in reality the studio or the platform that you're going to purchase it from is likely to do a discount because of all the issues they're having they're just trying to get people to play the games so it's it's kind of a toss-up in, in my opinion do i enjoy this game yeah i do um i'm not hard to please honestly for video games but this is definitely one of those games like uh be able to play as harley quinn king king shark Chink, king shark deadshot and captain boomerang like each one of them has their own individual play style that works to you and you can kind of learn that depth along the way however i find myself playing more as like harley quinn and king shark because the tank and the agile on this just kind of works better deadshot is good um captain boomerang i didn't play too terribly much with him in like comparison to the other three um but number one character honestly is harley quinn then king shark and deadshot and then captain boomerang that's just because i prefer harley quinn over the other three and she just her moves are a little bit more up front and you can quicker attack uh, but the boss battle so to speak being the four uh wonder woman green lantern the flash and superman um you do face batman as well of course because he is in the justice league i'm going to leave batman out because he is in boss in material um kind of thing and that alone that alone without giving into details of what happens at the end of it um if you've seen it around you're fully aware but that alone the 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 final fight the final moment um of all of it is just it's a letdown and the story was seemed decent maybe even good at the beginning uh it progressed in the manner which i thought it would and it was going smoothly um you would face I'm not saying these in order that you fight them. I'm just the way I remember them. Wonder Woman wasn't too terribly difficult to difficult by any means. A um, little tedious, but not difficult by any means. And then the flash was more annoying and a nuisance, especially since they're still, at least when I was playing again like on PC, there seemed to have been a bug that's still not resolved. So having difficulties even locating the flash, it just, it was very, very freaking time consuming. It more of a nuisance and annoyance of just be like, I'm so fucking sick of this boss. Let's just get this over with. Um, Superman, you know, him being Superman, he's, he's hard. He was designed to be hard. Green Lantern, this is going to kind of sound, kind of sound weird. Um, but if you know our podcast, it's in line with our, what who we are and what we are about um green lantern was a a an interesting boss because what happens after the fight scene is in my i laughed i thought it was hilarious i had a amazing time with the end scene or the post fight scene and it was just it's one of those like yeah it makes sense i'm glad they went that avenue i'm glad it worked out that way and it didn't feel so far-fetched uh, but with all that kind of said is the control the control abilities meaning like how you handle the characters how they interact how they play and how they move and all that um jazz is i i would say it's it's good it 
it's a it has good control good movability and just good like it, it, middle of the road nothing i'd be like oh my god i could do all this i could do all that there's superpowers there's specials where nothing that stood out um and that's kind of the theme of this entire game is there's really nothing that stood out in a in a massively overwhelming positive light by any means um now with a say again not really a positive but an interesting moment is the final one with batman that one is probably the biggest thing that stood out for me in this game is purely because like for me i knew it was going to happen i knew it was uh, what to expect but the deliverance of it just was probably the biggest letdown in my opinion and uh, it seems to be echo through even the reviews is a lot of people are very upset with that final moment uh, green lantern same um, similarities to my reflection on it being an interesting one and being kind of funny and a unique take seems to be echoed along as well um, you get kind of mixed reviews on flash and wonder woman and superman uh, flash early on like early access all of us were having or well over the majority of us were having issues with the flash just that glitch or that bug whatever you want to call it that you weren't able to see him and when you did see him it didn't behave properly where you had a justified enough time to attack so there's some issues there but again he was just the most problematic one simply because there was an issue with the gameplay itself um it wasn't a user interface issue it was it was it was gameplay so that's unfortunate but yeah and again you can kind of see these all for the most part are within the same realm of each other um gameplay as a whole you probably i mean i beat it i think i'd be in like three days but i don't play very long um uh, but roughly like you know 20 hours i say i don't play very long but if my wife's at work i, I get time to play uh, but about 20 hours give or take and that's just to kind of beat the game uh, you can probably do it a lot sooner than that um it's hit and miss it depends on if you're trying to do side quests and you get distracted like i do where i'm i'm doing I'm, try, I'm trying to do side content because i you know i gotta go over there i gotta go over there i gotta check this out because i've been programmed for 25 30 years of knowing that there may be something behind this building or this rock or this billboard stand or uh there's a group of enemies over here maybe they drop good loot type thing and um not always the case in directions of which i thought they would lead they didn't directions they i would never thought they led they of course did so there's some like happiness uh positive to positivity with that aspect I, I was good with it um as far as like how it goes about just the most simplistic way to kind of explain this is kind of where the reviews come into play very strongly is it's really just here's a group of purple villains go smash them oh there's another group of villains smash them storyline smash villain smash villain storyline um so it comes very much as repetitive and uh, monotonous where you're just like oh, i'm doing the same thing over and over and over and over and there's not a whole lot of change or a whole lot of inconsistency so to speak which is in this type of game inconsistency can be good it can also be very very bad um just depending upon what you're talking about for inconsistency but um it was consistent like here's your group of villains go destroy them loot move on to the next one just like um it i struggled through that and definitely got to the point where like i'd stop and walk away and go do something because i got a little annoyed on that um the bosses again they weren't terribly difficult and they do have difficulty modes on this um, i did play on normal to kind of get the feel of the game and play it all i did beat on hard as well um hard took me a little bit longer but not too much longer as far as like the story it, again it's good it's not amazing it's just it's middle of the road is good it's good gameplay the activities and everything keeps you busy and helps break up the monotony of facing villain after villain after villain after villain horde but at the same time for me it wasn't enough to to justify just how many freaking villains i had to had to go through to get to these uh activities 
Uh, the mechanics, again, they're good. I, I wouldn't highly rate them by any means. Um, so it's, yeah. As far as diversity of like story and characters, again, if you know Suicide Squad, I would, if you know the comics, if you know the the actual story behind them, um, this definitely, or don't want to say definitively, uh, this may not be for you because uh, comic book games are very, very hit and miss on do they stick with the the lore, so to speak, of the comic book franchise or do they kind of deviate and these are just the characters. I think it's a happy medium. I'm not big into the Suicide Squad comic series. I have not read a lot of them. I, I probably got to tell you maybe like two. And I think they were just featured in there. Um, but I'm also not a big DC guy. I'm, I'm more Marvel. And Bat and Sun. So. But regardless. Uh, the build you can do for your character. Because of course you can change uh, stats. Let's call them. To increase you know, attack and health and all that. Um, jazz and your specials and your abilities. Uh, it, that was good. They, you definitely had options and had plenty of options to change each character as you see fit. Um, they all had, of course, different weapons. And I will say the one cool thing that I thought was interesting and kind of a positive note on it was the respect. Changing your attribute points as you needed um, was amazing. So tons of weapons and diversity in the build. That's probably the biggest uh, positivity or positive note on them. Um, looting aspect, so so, not not great, not amazing by any means. Uh, the story again is it's good. Middle of the road, good for me is really just like oh it's like it's not boring. It has a storyline. It's consistent on the story. You're not deviating. You're not getting lost. I'm like oh wait, when did this happen? Visuals are amazing. I will say that I love the visual of this. Um, they're not perfect. They're not close to perfect they're still amazing and some work could still definitely be done um but it's really going from point a to point b to point c very yeah very very just there um lots of references inside the dc universe so you have or dc comic universe i should say not the dc universe because that's the movie franchise that's getting ready to start out uh but overall um you you will see mixed reviews on this saying Really, it's flip-flop. It's either a terrible game or it's an amazing game. Again, my opinion is it's a middle of the road. It's not a great game. It's not a shit game. It is a good, decent single-player game. Uh, you have enough in there to do the replayability. However, because there, it's like very... What's the best way to put this? story driven aspect so again a to b to c to d to e you get to the final boss um as that is the purpose of this game i can't put the replayability super high like i would for like even skyrim or grand theft auto just simple or even god of war because it's one of those like you play the story like all right cool perfect okay there's nothing you can really go in and and do other than just try to do on a, a difficult, more difficult mode, which is the only reason why I replayed it was to see if how much harder hard mode was in comparison to normal. And I mean, it's harder. It's, it's I would say it's not up there with take out of works. I love that franchise. Not a significant difference like God of War where you're going from a normal difficulty to hard mode and you're like, holy fuck, I'm I'm struggling here. Uh, and you like God of War, you're struggling most of the time. Suicide Squad, yes, it was a little bit harder, but it wasn't massively noticeable. The bosses still felt easy to a degree. Um, not like they really got any more difficult by any means. Um but with that said, I would not I would not compare this to Rocksteady's other highly successful game, which is Batman Arkham series. Uh, because if you do, and unfortunately I, I did go in because 
whole reason why I wanted to do this because I was like, oh man, I love Arkham series. Yeah, no. No, nah, that probably is what gave me such a middle of the road uh, opinion and oversight on this is just it's it's there. Um, so if you don't compare it to that, it's a, it's a good game. The biggest thing I would say and again, grand assault type thing. That's all these opinion, all these game reviews that we do are, it, it's very heavily opinionated at our perspective. Uh, would I spend the $70 price tag on this? Would I spend $70 to hell, even pre-order this? Would I have done that any different? Well, one, I don't pre-order games. Hardly ever. And it has to be a game like I'm following for a very long time. There are very, very, very few games in the last... Um, 10 years that I have pre-ordered and one of them or most of them of course are God of War um, a couple of Assassin's Creed because I do enjoy that that franchise uh, stopped doing that though with um, since Valhalla uh, but Destiny I think would, has been the only game I pre-ordered in the last five years I didn't pre-order Call of Duty I, I will never pre-order Call of Duty um uh, not oh hogwarts legacy that would be the most recent game i think that i pre-ordered and it was worth its money this is one of those few that i uh, definitely got on a pre-order uh i don't think it's worth 70 dollars. very plain and simple there are very very few games i truly think deserve that 70 dollar price tag uh and this is just not one of this is definitely one of those like 30 to 45 dollar price range and be like yes that's it's, that's it's worth that's how well this game was. Um, even excluding the comparison to Batman Arkham series, it's still about a thirty to forty-five dollar game. There's still enough bugs and glitches inside of it. Again, from a PC playthrough, which is what I did, um, I've seen some console players having issues as well. But because this is a review based off my experience, it's through the game play on a on a computer on the PC. Uh, there's just enough bugs and. And glitches, minor little things that just became a nuisance for me where I was like, eh, it's not worth $70. This all should have been resolved. I don't know why this is still becoming an issue, why we can't release the game at least 85% 85 uh, 85 fully complete, um, or realistically 90 to 95%. Uh, damn near finished. It should be damn near finished. And this game just feels like there's things to fix. There's still items which I'm looking for to make it a perfect game. I just, I can't justify the $70 price tag is what I'm getting at. There's no way for me to do that for you guys. Uh, I would say definitely wait for this game to go on sale. If you can get it through a streaming type service where you can pay a monthly and then get it and play it for, you know, $10 or $15 or do a week trial if they have it, uh, then definitely go that avenue. To my Current understanding is there is no it, it's it's not on game uh, game pass or PlayStation plus at the time of this recording doesn't mean it's not going to be at some point. Um, however, again, there's a lot I want. I can't give spoilers away. I don't want to give spoilers away. That's kind of what's hindering what's making something like I'm jumping around the places because there's a lot of spoilers or finite information. I believe I could say that would spoiler certain things. I don't like that, especially with this game having came in, just came out at the top of February and this episode being released shortly after. We're not going to spoil some shit. Uh, we will do another episode to kind of get into the nitty gritty, but it won't be purely based upon this like this episode is. However, with that set aside, compared to a more recent DC game that it came out, I think, a year. Was it a year? One second. Uh, it's been over a year. Got the Knights that came out in October of 2022. Um, that's, again, another one of those games that had a lot of hype behind it, and that one was just not great by any means. Um, I don't remember if we did a review on that one. I don't think we did. Um, but Suicide Squad, compared to Got the Knights, night and day difference you can definitely tell they they fucked up and they're figuring out uh rock city still has some things to fix this is not a near perfect game by any means uh and i don't like doing scales like one to five because it's too finite of a scale 
where it's like one to ten, it's a little bit better. This is one of those games I give it like a seven. You know, it's a good game. There's a lot to still be left to desire from it, but it's still a good game to go through and play. And I think a lot of these bugs and glitches are going to be resolved really quick now that there's been so much hype around and there's been so much coverage around it uh, talking about these issues that so many players are having so definitely would recommend playing this game but not at the 70 dollars price tag wait for it to go on sale i highly anticipate this game going on sale within a month um, especially just because it is rock steady and any it seems to be anytime they have a game that doesn't do amazing and doesn't have the the purchasing power then they seem to go on sell a little bit quicker so i honestly expect this to go on sell by end of february if not uh by the end of march for like a spring time sale uh, at that point depending upon the discount it may be worth it um, i've been seeing a lot of triple a studios giving their $70 games discounts and it's like $59.99 back to the traditional new release price uh, which is the thing of the past so I again I don't think it's worth that but $10 off still $10 off so just be on the lookout for it uh, it is again it is a a good game seven seven and a half I will not give it anything above that as I don't think it's warranted with just some issues I personally have had with it and things like massive things like the boss, especially the flash, um, and then the upset with how they finish it. It's just a lot left to desire, in my opinion. So, but shorter episode, we'll wrap it up at that. Uh, again, keep an eye out on this one if you are a fan of DC or you are looking for a game to get into like the single player mode and the single player aspect and you want to keep it comic book related by far the best comic book series video game again is batman arkham series from asylum to city to night and it goes in that order those are those are amazing the story the longevity of it it's amazing i highly recommend that game if again it's been out for a hot minute to like a, several years but if you're looking into it, definitely go get that. Again, this game is not associated to that same storyline or universe, though I could see how they could tie them together without um, Arkham Knight ended. Definitely could. But yeah, again, not worth $70 price tag. I go recommend Batman Arkham Trilogy if you are into single player games. Uh, go check the other previous game review of Power World. Cause that's also a really good like single player yet multiplayer um, if you want it to but wait for a discount kind of be my overall consensus on this um, hopefully it, i didn't spoil anything i don't think i did i maybe have if you want to see the green lantern but you don't want to play it just go youtube it green lantern suicide squad uh kill the justice league fight scene and post fight and see what i'm talking about because in my opinion i laugh i thought it was really good it shouldn't have been as good as funny as it was to me i digress uh, but still good and if you want to see the batman um scene you can do the same thing on youtube as well i'm not going to spoil it but that's the the biggest issue for me why i can't give it above a seven seven and a half uh, but definitely worth a playthrough wait for it to go on sale it's not very heavy on a computer by any means um, again console plays very nice as well but that is all i got for you and yeah for now anyways so stay tuned for the next episode we do have new episodes coming out every tuesday and thursday if you want to watch the video edition of any of our podcasts all you have to do is head over to patreon.com for slash two guys one gamepad and you will find our channel there and that is a exclusive a subscriber exclusive one uh, for three dollars a month you get access to all the video editions of season three and going forward along with behind the scene content as we have it uh 
special graphics. You, there's a lot of stuff over there. Uh, it's only $3 a month because Patreon won't let me set any lower than that. Uh, but you get you do get a free week long trial. So seven days. If you subscribe to kind of t test it out, see if you like it, see if it's something you want to um, go with. Other than that, go follow us on social media everywhere. Uh, join the Discord. All of this is listed and linked down below in the description of each podcast episode. Follow us for the most part. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook as that is where we can talk to everybody a little bit better and easier. Uh, everything's at two guys wing and pad. Other than, yeah. Otherwise, every Thursday night, Roggle, the other half of you guys wing and pad, him and I hop on to our streaming platforms of our choice and we play Call of Duty. For the most part, that's all we've played because he doesn't play a lot of games. He doesn't have a diverse collection like I do. Um, but we do get together and we play Call of Duty and we're always looking for player, uh, the people to join up with us. Sometimes it's just random lobby members or viewers in our, our channels. Sometimes it's from Discord. Sometimes it's from other groups we're a part of. But come join us on our respective platform. Again, his is underneath his name, Rahgel, R-A-H-G-E-L, over on Twitch. Uh, should be linked down below. And then mine is at Cybermark Sig, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and Kick. Go check it out. We have a lot of fun. Uh, we really just continue on with what we record on Tuesdays, but it doesn't become an episode because it's a lot of just frustration with the game and funny moments that's all i got for you amazing viewers and listeners thank you so much until next time everyone take care hope you enjoy this episode make sure you rate it comment if you don't like game reviews if you like game reviews let us know what you think about this but until next time everyone take care and we'll see you on the next episode till then everyone